Alorix offers a dynamic selection of security systems to suit many homeowners' needs. Today, we'll look at installing a full six-camera IP system into this two-story house. The system consists of an NVR model NR9082, four dome cameras model LNE4172, an audio-enabled dome camera LND4751, and a domed pan, tilt, zoom, or PTZ camera LNZ44PB. All cameras have the cabling supplied. We're also using a high quality exterior grade extension cable. The first step is to determine where the NVR is to be located. Here we have chosen an upstairs office. This room has an adjoining wall to the attic above a garage. Using an attic or garage to route your wiring is a great option because it offers easy access to the home plus a secure and weather resistant area. We first drill a test hole through the drywall to determine the location for an access hole on the attic wall. That will be made later during the installation process. We've decided to use a faceplate with a flexible gasket for the wiring. Mark the area with a template and drill two holes in opposite corners. Remove the remainder of the drywall to create a properly sized hole for the faceplate. We'll install the faceplate once the installation is complete. Let's head into the attic above the garage. We locate the starter test hole and cut a slightly larger hole to accommodate all the wiring. We're all ready to install the cameras. We'll start with the front door area. The side wall on the porch adjoins the wall inside the garage so we can drill through the exterior under the porch and into the garage. Cite the location with the camera LNE4172 to find the correct location and mark a spot to drill. Now we drill a small starter hole and then expand the hole with a larger bit. We now unscrew the outer ring of the camera and extract the base plate which will be screwed into the wall. Install the mounting plate with four screws. Attach the CAD5E cable to the fish tape with electrical tape and thread the camera cable through the hole. Place the camera back into the mounting location and tighten the collar until the camera is secure in its approximate correct location. Remove the protective cover on the lens with a small piece of tape. It's ideal to keep the motion detector sensor pointing down in order for the image to be oriented correctly. Now inside the garage, we drill a hole into the garage ceiling where the CAD5E cabling will be inserted. It's always good in a multi-camera setup to color code the cabling on both ends in order to track cameras when plugging into the back of the NVR. Take the supplied CAD5E cable and insert the larger weatherproof connection end through the hole in the ceiling. Now you may connect the CAD5E cable to the connector on the camera. Simply insert the connector and match up both portions of the outer connectors. Twist and tighten. We now have a sealed connection. The second ideal spot for a camera is facing the driveway and front yard. This provides overlapping coverage with the front door camera. Roughly place the camera in the desired location and mark the spot where the hole will be drilled. Drill through the wood cladding with a small pilot hole and then a larger bore drill bit. Unscrew the outer ring and remove the camera from the base. Place the base back over the large hole and screw the base onto the siding. Attach the CAD5E cable to the fish tape with electrical tape and thread the camera cabling through the hole and reattach the outer retaining rings by turning clockwise. 
keep the motion detector sensor pointing down to make sure the video image is oriented correctly. We can now drill a hole into the garage ceiling as we did before for the front door camera. From inside the attic, simply push the supplied CAD5E cable through the hole. As before, connect the camera cabling to the long CAD5E cable using the Loric Secure Connector System. When running the cable in the attic, it's important to secure the cable to support structure. The third camera to be installed is along the side of the house, right near a window. We'll run the cabling through the attic and along the soffit. In this case, the soffits are fully accessible from the attic by removing fiberglass insulation. The aluminum soffits can be gently dislodged from the tracks to allow the cabling to run along the edge of the soffit. Pull a reasonable amount of the CAD5E cable from the attic through the edge of the soffit, making sure you have an extra few feet of cable for adjustment purposes. Gently insert the cable along the edging of the soffit where there is a cavity inside the edge channel. Slowly move along the soffit until the desired location. Gently removing the soffit, route the cable to the building side of the soffit. Place the camera in the desired location to determine where a cable access hole needs to be drilled. Drill a small hole on the edge of the soffit and remove the aluminum. This will leave a small hole on the soffit. Remove the aluminum using some pliers. Remove a portion of the metal to allow the cable to pass through. It's a good idea to place some electrical tape over the cut edge to protect the cabling. Remove the camera from the base as before to release the mounting base from the camera. Put the camera along the fascia and mark the location. Run the camera cabling through the notch in the base and attach the base with four screws. Connect the camera cable to the CAT5E cable with the secure connections. Place the cables in the cavity above the camera and replace the soffit. Reattach the camera to the mount using the outer rings. Adjust the angle of the camera, ensuring the motion control sensor points towards the ground. The fourth camera will be installed above the side door just below an air vent. This will provide coverage for the side door and window. Inside the attic, there is a long open cavity, approximately 25 feet long, where the air vent can be accessed. We can run the CAT5E cable inside this cavity to reach the metal air vent. Taking a long painter's pole, we attach the CAT5E cable to the tip of the pole using electrical tape. Extending out the pole allows us to reach the end of the cavity. We leave the pole in place. Now we remove the screws that hold the vent in place. Place the camera roughly in its final position and mark the location. In order for the camera cable to be run inside the cavity, we need to create a notch in the wood to let the cable pass under the vent without being pinched. Using a Dremel tool with a cylindrical abrasive, we sand down a notch. We can also use a round file to create the notch. Remove the camera from the base by unscrewing the outer ring as before. Place the bracket against the wood siding, making sure to put the cable under one of the notches. Attach the base with four screws. Reattach the camera by screwing on the retaining rings. Adjust the position of the camera by rotating the ball so that the motion detector sensor points down. Remove the long CAT5E cable from the painter's pole and connect the camera with the secure connections. We'll remove the painter's pole once all the wiring is complete. Place some electrical tape over the camera cabling to secure it in the notch. Reattach the vent with the corner screws.
It is not uncommon that a full system will require cabling to the back of the house. This means that the CAD5E cable must be routed from the NVR location to the backyard area. This may require running the cable through ceiling joists. In this case, we'll run the cable through the garage wall right beside a water spigot into the basement, continuing through the basement joist to the back of the home. We use a large bore bit to drill through the garage wall beside the spigot. From the basement, we push two CAD5E cables through the hole. We pull enough cable through in order to reach the office NVR location, approximately 20 feet. The cable must be protected from potential damage, so we are using 3 quarter inch PVC conduit. Run the CAD5E cables through the conduit and remove any slack in the cabling to ensure the conduit fits snugly against the garage wall. Notch the end of the conduit in order for it to fit over the cable entering the garage from the basement. We attach the conduit to the garage wall with conduit strapping. We drill a hole in the ceiling where the cabling will be sent into the attic and into the office. Gently push the cabling into the attic. In many cases, basements have finished ceilings. So running the cables means creating access ports to fish the wire through the ceiling cavities. This basement bedroom is directly beside the outdoor location for the backyard camera. There is already an access port for a water shutoff, but we need to add another port on the other side of the room in order to make fishing the cable much easier. These access ports are readily available from your local home improvement center. Use the supplied template for the access plate. Mark the edges with a utility knife. We drill four corner holes and with a drywall saw, we cut out the square port. We push aside the fiberglass insulation. Using a fish tape, we navigate the metal tape to the utility room where the CAD5E cables have been routed to the garage. Attach the CAD5E cable to the fish tape with electrical tape and pull the cable through to the newly created access port. Pull enough cable through in order to reach the outside location, approximately 35 feet. Disconnect the cable from the fish tape and run the fish tape from the other access port to reach the newly created port. Attach the cable to the fish tape with electrical tape and pull the cable through to the other port. Since we're installing two cameras in the back, we tape the second cable already routed from the utility room to the first cat 5 e cable and continue to pull it through to the original access port near the window. Once the second cable is through to the new access port, we continue to pull both cables to the other access port. Now both cables are going to be routed to the outside. Beside the backyard water spigot, we've marked off a location to drill to the inside cavity where the two cat 5 e cables have been routed to. Drill into the wood siding and into the interior basement ceiling. We're using a junction box designed for exterior use and need to drill a hole into the corner of the box. Lining up the box hole and the wall hole, we attach the junction box to the wood siding with four screws. Once the box is attached, we push the fish tape through the box and into the inside of the basement ceiling cavity. Using electrical tape, we fasten the first cable, which is also taped to the second cable, to the end of the fish tape. Pull the cable to the exterior, leaving enough cable to reach the camera location up near the soffit. The second cable will stop at the junction box and will eventually feed an exterior grade ethernet cable for the deck camera. This location is being serviced with a different camera, LND4751, which is an audio-enabled camera with a built-in microphone. This camera comes with a unique high-quality mounting hood which houses all the cabling. The camera has to be attached to this mounting hood prior to wall mounting. Remove the wall mount plate by loosening the hex bolt on the bottom of the mount. Remove the camera cover using the provided Torx wrench. 
Now thread the camera cable into the mounting cavity. Secure the camera with the provided hex bolts and the hex wrench. Roughly position the camera by rotating the ball head. Then reattach the camera cover with the two torque screws. Now the camera can be installed. In order to send the cable up to the camera location, we again use a PVC conduit. We route the backyard camera CAT5E cable down through the bottom of the junction box and under the siding over to the PVC conduit. We've notched the top of the conduit to allow the cable to enter the mounting hood. We've also drilled two holes, one smaller and one bigger, to allow screwing the conduit to the siding. These holes will be filled later with plugs or gray caulking. We roughly place the conduit in the corner in order to help locate the mounting plate location. Attach the mounting plate with a minimum of two screws. Attach the conduit to the house siding with three screws. Run the fish tape through the conduit, attach the CAT5V cable to the fish tape and pull it through to the top of the conduit. Lorex makes a secure connection weatherproof kit that can be attached to the raw cable. Slide the outer cover onto the cable end and then screw the larger cover onto the first connector installed. Place the supplied silicon gasket onto the cable by separating the gasket at the slit and placing it over the cable. Push the gasket into the connector. Place a silicon O-ring onto the camera connector. Connect both ends of the cabling and tighten the secure housing cover. The Ethernet connection is now fully weather sealed. Now gently place the excess cabling into the camera mount cavity. Hinge the camera onto the wall mount plate and tighten the hex bolt at the bottom. The final camera is to be installed above the side deck and is being connected by a special outdoor CAT6 extension cabling, CBL100C6RXU, available from the Lorex website. Inside the backyard junction box, we use a readily available Ethernet coupler. We thread the exterior grade cable through the bottom of the junction box and connect the cables using the coupler. It's best to use electrical tape to fully protect this coupler even though the junction box is fully weather tight. We run the outdoor cabling under the siding and under the deck to the desired location at the corner of the deck. It's best to staple the cabling to the wood understructure of the deck. A hole must be drilled in the decking and another hole from below to allow the cable to be threaded up to the camera location. Thread the cable from below and pull out enough to reach the camera. Wrap the excess cable in a loop and secure it under the deck. In this location, we're also using PVC conduit to reach the final location. Notch the top of the conduit to allow the cable to exit the conduit and fit into the mounting bracket. This location is best suited for a pan tilt zoom camera. We'll be able to pan all the way from the patio doors to the backyard deck. The LNZ44PB uses the same mounting system as the backyard camera. The camera cover must be removed with a supplied Torx wrench. Attach the camera body to the mount with Allen bolts, making sure to line up the cable in the mounting notch. Reattach the dome cover and remove the mounting plate as we did before. Now the camera is ready to install. Using a tape measure, locate the position of the mounting plate. Use at least two screws to secure the plate to the siding. Once the conduit is cut to length, thread the cable through the conduit. Place the conduit in place and gently install three screws to secure the conduit to the siding. Connect the camera ethernet to the ethernet extension cable and wrap the connector with electrical tape to add further protection from the elements.
Remove the silicon plug on the side of the mount to accommodate the cabling. We gently place the cable into the mount cavity and tilt the camera mount onto the wall mount. Secure the camera to the wall mount with the hex bolt on the bottom. Remove the protective plastic from the camera dome. Now all cameras are fully installed, but still need to be connected to the NVR. Back in the attic, insert all of the cables through the wall access hole. We fabricated a protective metal plate with a slot to accommodate the cables and fully close off the hole in the attic wall. Insert the Ethernet cables into the NVR. Attach the VGA cable and power connector. Once the NVR fully boots, we can see the cameras deliver sharp images both day and night. The PTZ camera can pan from the patio doors to the backyard area. Installing a Lorix IP camera system can be a challenging process, but with a bit of planning and modest effort, the system can yield tremendous results, superb imaging and convenience for many years to come.